Have you ever wondered how great leaders make flawless, strategic decisions? A question that has intrigued many minds. The answer, my friends, lies in the power of strategy and planning. This concept, as old as civilization itself, is the secret source that separates the great from the good. In any field, be it business, sports, politics, or even personal life, strategy and planning play a pivotal role. A well-laid plan, like a compass, guides us through the stormy seas of uncertainty towards our desired destination. This brings us to the timeless wisdom of Sun Tzu's Art of War, a masterpiece that provides profound insights into strategic planning. Today, we focus on the chapter Laying Plans, which lays the foundation of strategic thinking. It unveils the intricate web of decision-making, helping us understand the nuances of crafting an effective plan. As we delve into Sun Tzu's wisdom, remember that these principles work in any situation that requires strategy and planning. Sun Tzu begins laying plans by identifying five fundamental factors that determine the outcomes of warfare. Let's delve into these critical elements, shall we? First up is the moral law. This principle refers to harmony with one's people, ensuring they follow their leader without fear of threat or punishment. In modern contexts, it could translate to the culture within a company or a family. A strong positive culture can make or break the success of any entity, be it a business or a household. Next, we have heaven and earth. Heaven symbolizes the day-night cycle and the different seasons, while earth represents the physical environment, including distances, danger and security. Today, these factors could represent the timing and conditions of a market in business or the influences and circumstances surrounding personal decisions. The third factor is the commander, who stands for wisdom, sincerity, benevolence, courage and strictness. In today's world, the commander could be a CEO, a team leader or even you making decisions in your personal life. The qualities of the commander greatly influence the outcome of the strategy. Lastly, we have method and discipline. This refers to the organization and control of large groups, including logistics and supply chains in warfare. In modern terms, it points towards the systems and processes within a company or the habits and routines in an individual's life. In essence, these five factors, the moral law, heaven, earth, the commander and method and discipline are as relevant today as they were in the times of Sun Tzu. They can be applied not just in warfare, but in business strategy, personal decisions and everyday life. Understanding these factors is the first step towards mastering the art of strategic planning. So, let's continue our journey into the art of strategic planning armed with this new knowledge. Stay tuned as we explore the next elements of Sun Tzu's laying plans. Having identified the fundamental factors, Sun Tzu moves on to the elements that a leader should appraise before engaging in warfare. Let's unravel the seven elements together. First, we ask, which of the two sovereigns is imbued with the moral law? Now this isn't about finding the most virtuous king in a moral sense. It's about which leader has the loyalty and trust of his people, a crucial element in any strategic plan. In today's world, this could be the CEO who has the confidence and trust of their team, or the political leader with a high approval rating. The second element is, which of the two generals has most ability? In essence, who has the skill, knowledge and experience to lead? Picture a business scenario where this could be the difference between an experienced manager and a novice. The third question is, with whom lie the advantages derived from heaven and earth? In Sun Tzu's time, this meant the advantages of weather and terrain. Today, we might consider the market climate and competitive landscape. Fourthly, we evaluate on which side is discipline most rigorously enforced. This implies order, coordination and control within the ranks. In a corporate context, a well-structured and organized team often outperforms a disorganized one. The fifth element is which army is stronger this isn't merely about numbers, but also resources and capabilities. It could be the company with their larger budget, or the team with more skilled members. Next, we ask, 
on which side are officers and men more highly trained? This speaks to the quality of training and development. A team with superior skills and training is a formidable force. The final question is, in which army is there the greater constancy both in reward and punishment? This is about consistency in recognizing achievement and addressing underperformance. These questions are not just for generals in warfare, but for anyone who wishes to succeed in their strategic endeavors. So reflect on these seven elements, and you'll be better equipped to lay down your plans for victory. Sun Tzu asserts that planning is the key to victory. This profound insight from the ancient military strategist still holds true today. Whether we're talking about warfare, business, or personal goals, planning and preparation are crucial for success. Imagine a chess game, the player who takes the time to strategize, to anticipate their opponent's moves, and to plan their own is the one most likely to checkmate their opponent. This is a perfect analogy for Sun Tzu's teachings. He knew that victory is not a product of luck or chance, but of careful and calculated planning. But what does planning entail, according to Sun Tzu? It's more than just a series of steps or a checklist. It's a mindset, a way of thinking and viewing the world. It involves understanding your strengths and weaknesses, recognizing opportunities when they arise, and being prepared to adapt when circumstances change. For Sun Tzu, planning also involves a deep understanding of the enemy or the challenge at hand. Knowing the terrain, understanding the weather, and predicting the enemy's movements are all part of the planning process. This is why Sun Tzu put such emphasis on the importance of spies and intelligence in warfare. In the modern context, this could translate to market research in business or self-reflection in personal development. Planning, in the Sun Tzu sense, also demands discipline and patience. It's not about rushing into battle unprepared, but about waiting for the right moment to strike. It's about maintaining composure in the face of adversity and not letting emotions cloud judgment. And finally, it's about action. A plan, no matter how brilliant, is worthless if it's not executed. Sun Tzu knew that victory belongs to those who can turn their plans into action, those who can seize the moment when it arrives. So the next time you're faced with a challenge, remember Sun Tzu's words. Take the time to plan, to understand, to prepare, and to act. Remember, victory is reserved for those who are willing to pay its price. So, what can we take away from Sun Tzu's laying plans? In the whirlwind of strategy and planning, the principles of laying plans stand as timeless pillars. The five fundamental factors, the essence of war, remind us to consider the way, the weather, the terrain, the leadership, and the discipline in every strategic move we make. The seven elements for appraisal further refine our understanding, guiding us to assess the moral compass, heaven's conditions, earth's constraints, the commander's virtues, the organization's structure, and the strength of discipline and training. And let's not forget the pivotal connection between planning and victory. Sun Tzu's wisdom implores us to understand that thorough planning and strategy are the cornerstones of achieving victory, even in the most daunting circumstances. These principles are not just confined to the battlefield, they are relevant in every modern context from business to personal life. So, adopt these principles in your own strategic planning. As Sun Tzu said, victory comes from finding opportunities in problems. So keep laying plans and keep winning. Now that we've learned from Sun Tzu's wisdom, it's time to apply it. This ancient knowledge isn't just for the battlefield, it's for the battles we face every day. Whether you're planning a business strategy, navigating your career, or simply trying to overcome a personal challenge, the art of war has something to teach you. Think about the five fundamental factors, the way, the weather, the terrain, the leadership, and discipline. How can you apply these to your situation? Perhaps you need to change your approach, or maybe it's time to step up and take on a leadership role. Or it could be that you need more discipline to see your plans through to the end. And consider the seven elements for appraisal. How well do you know your strengths and weaknesses, and those of your opponents? 
Can you turn a disadvantage into an advantage? Can you find opportunities in the most unlikely places? Take a moment to reflect. How can you apply these strategies in your own life? How can you use Sun Tzu's wisdom to navigate your own path to victory? We invite you to share your thoughts in the comments below. Perhaps you've already used these principles and have a success story to share. Or maybe you're struggling with a challenge and could use some advice. Whatever your situation, we'd love to hear from you. And remember, the art of war isn't just a book, it's a way of thinking. It's about being adaptable, flexible, and ready to change course at a moment's notice. It's about understanding not just your enemies, but yourself. It's about planning, strategizing, and executing those plans with precision and discipline. So, take Sun Tzu's wisdom with you as you go forth. Apply it, live it, and let it guide you to victory. Remember, the best strategist is the one who learns and adapts. So, keep learning, keep adapting, and keep winning. Until next time.